turn over to our main scripture, James chapter 1. So we're on uh, part four of our series, What It Means to Be a Doer of the Word. And our main scripture has been James chapter 1, verse 22. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. So we've been talking about that there is a deception that we can get ourselves into by hearing the word of God only and not doing it, right? This isn't a deception that comes from somebody else. This is a deception that you yourself put yourself into. And this is why God has really been um, digging deep into this about what it means to be a doer of the word, what a doer of the word does. Because many of us, probably all of us, mm -hmm. at some point in our life, has deceived ourselves into thinking that we are doers of the word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right? Yep. Yeah. Just say yes. yes. Because it's, it's all of us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, you know, it's, like, it's all right. You know, it's all right. Because <laughs> there's always one area where we think, oh, yeah, I'm doing it. And then <laughs> and then the Lord starts talking to you. You're like, no, Lord, I'm, I'm doing it. And he's like, no, seriously. <laughs> and you go, oh, well, maybe not. You know. And deception means believing something is true, but it's actually a lie. That's deception. Believing something is true when it's actually a lie. And there are many in the body of Christ that are believing lies that are true. You know, the lie, well, God's a respecter of persons. He blesses everybody else but me. That is a lie that people are believing that is true and it's not true. Because God is not a respecter of persons. What is he a respecter of? Faith. Faith. He's a respecter of faith. And in order to exercise faith, what do you have to do? You have to be a doer. That's right. You got to do what God's telling you to do, right? So we've talked just to kind of do an early review. Um, is that in order to be a doer of the word, you got to remember what you heard, right? Because if you can't remember what you heard, how can you do it? So we got to make sure that we value the word enough, whether it's spoken by the Spirit of God or whether it's spoken through the Word of God, right? That's the revelation that you get that you're writing it down and that you're going back and you're reviewing it. That are you confessing the word? As confession is a way of remembering the word and putting it before you so that you can do it. Amen? Amen. Amen. We also talked about hearing is not doing. There's a spirit of entertainment that has crept into the church. And that spirit of entertainment is they come, they sit, they listen, and then they go. You know, spirit of entertainment is just like, okay, entertain me. I want to hear something new. I want to hear something exciting. I want to see, move me. You know? And that's not what church is all about. Church is about teaching you how to develop a relationship with God so that you can go home and do what you heard. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? All right? Um, and then we talked about talking is not doing. So you talking about it, saying that you're going to do it, is that doing it? No. 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 <laughs> talking about, well, I'm going to do this, doesn't mean you've done it yet. All right? That's right. Uh, Proverbs 14, 23 says, In all labor there is profit, but mere talk leads only to poverty. That's good, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mere talk only leads to poverty. So we got to do some stuff. All right? We also talked about knowing is not doing. Right? Just because you're familiar with something doesn't mean that you're doing it. Mm -hmm. so, oh, well, I know that. Yeah, you know it, but are you doing it? Yeah, everybody knows to walk in love, right? Mm -hmm. all know, but are you doing it? That's the truth. <laughs> sort of, kind of, when I feel like it. Oh, well, you know, <laughs> we, we know we either got to do it or not do it. Yep. But just knowing it doesn't mean that we're doing it. Um, then we also talked about seeking first the kingdom of God. Right? A doer of the word seeks first the kingdom of God. God's word and what he wants you to do is first place. It's a priority. Amen. right? 
and that we also talked about within that is one way that you know that God is a priority in your life and that he, you're seeking him first is what are you doing with your tithe? What are you doing with your money, right? Because that's a real sensitive subject. People want to really hold on tight to their money. <laughs> you know? And, but we talked about when you are, where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. And you can tell, if you look at somebody's bank account, you can tell where their priorities are. Right? And um, we also talked about, you know, Elijah and the widow woman. Right? You know, he asked her, make me a cake first. Go get me some water. Number one, it was drought season. So water is like gold. Okay? So that was a stretch. And then he said, and then go make me something else to eat. And she's like, well, yo, dude, <laughs> wait a second. You know, I, don't, I only have a little bit of meal and a little bit of oil, and I'm going to go make my son and I a piece of cake. We're going to eat it, and then we're going to go die. That's how bad the situation was. And he said, no, make me a cake first. You know, and she knew he was a prophet. She knew he was a man of God. And so instead of arguing and crying and whining, she said, okay. And she did it. And because she put the man of God first – Right? The meal did not stop and the oil did not stop through that whole famine time. Mm-hmm. God right. took care of that. But that was because she put God first. Yep. She didn't go, well, I'm just not, I don't have enough. I, you know, how is that going to be possible? She said, no. He said to make, to do it, to give him a cake first and to believe God that he'll take care of us, I'm going to believe the prophet. Amen? Amen. Mm-hmm. The other side of that is not only does God want us to give, right, put him first place, but he also wants us to, to receive. A lot of people don't want to receive. And they think, oh, well, no, and it's, it's a false humility. That's what it is. Because the Bible says as we give, it's given back to us, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And then, so there's nothing wrong in receiving, but it's your attitude of heart. Yes, ma'am. You know, are you just doing, th- doing stuff just to receive, to get back? You know, well, I help these people so that when I need help, they'll help me. Mm-hmm. They might not be in a place to help you. Yeah. So you can't just, you know, well, I'll help you if you help me. No, it's not like that. It's I'm going to sow into people's lives, not expecting anything because God is going to have my back. He's going to bring people to help me when I need help. Amen. It might be people that I've helped. It might not be, and that's okay. Yeah. That's perfectly fine. Because what we do is we do everything unto the Lord. That's right. Everything unto the Lord. When you have that attitude, it changes how you do your work, doesn't it? Yeah. When you go to work and you do it unto the Lord, you do it a little bit better, right? Yeah. Or yep. you should be. <laughs> you should be. All right? Okay. And then last time we talked about a doer knows how to give thanks, how to praise the Lord, and manifest the joy of the Lord in their life, right? Yep. And so we talked about Thanksgiving. First Thessalonians 5.18 says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God and Christ Jesus concerning you. And then we also talked about praise and rejoicing. A doer of the word also knows how to praise the Lord in hard times because they know that there is power in praise. Amen. There is power in your praise. When you release the praise unto God, he will shake the foundations. And we saw that in Acts 16, right? All right? Proverbs 17, 22 says, A happy heart is good medicine, and a cheerful mind works healing, but a broken spirit dries up the bones. Right? And then we also talked about a doer of the word will manifest the fruit of the spirit of joy in their life. They're not moved by situations. They're moved by the word of God. They don't walk by sight. They walk by faith. So it doesn't matter what's going on. They always have a joyful attitude because they know that they serve a God who's going to help them through everything. Amen? Amen. 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 Psalms 119. 160 says, I rejoice at thy word as one that findeth great spoil. Right? We also talked about that joy is not the same as happiness. Happiness is based on your circumstances and what's going on. 
but as soon as things start to change for the worse, <laughs> right, then it's, oh, I'm not happy anymore. Mm, got a bill and there's not enough money in my bank account. <laughs> but a doer of the word goes, oh, I got a bill and there's not enough money in the bank account. Jesus, you got mail. <laughs> and I thank you, Lord, that I have more than enough to pay all of my bills on time. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Amen? Amen. 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 Because there is, there's always going to be an unexpected thing. But you don't have to let that change your attitude. Because God is on your side. You have the Holy Spirit to help you. Amen? Yep. Amen. <clears throat> a merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance. Your countenance is your face. Mm -hmm. You know, as Christians, people shouldn't be knowing what you're going through. Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> they should know by what you say. Like, oh, how's it going? Well, you know what? Let me tell you something. It's been a trying time, but let me tell you, God is good. And he is so faithful. And we have been really stretched in our faith. You know, you don't have to lie and say, well, things are all good, you know. But, you know, it's like we shouldn't have to know what's going on based on your face. Some of you guys walk in here and I already know what's going on. I don't even have to ask you. There's no point in asking you. Because it's like, nobody knows the trouble I see. You know? <laughs> Instead of, you know what, this is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it because my Savior died for me. Yeah. And if he did that for me, how much more? How much more is he willing to do everything Amen. else that I need? Amen. So I'm going to stand on his word. I'm going to stand on his love. I'm going to stand on what he has called me to do and it's all going to work out. Yes. Amen? Amen. It's going to work out. Right? Nehemiah 8.10 says, The joy of the Lord is your strength. How many need strength? I do. That's why we got to pull on the joy of the Lord. Ha, 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 devil. Amen. You know, laughing. Laughing just does your body like medicine. Mm -hmm. you no? Know? Okay. So that's kind of a quick review of what we have talked about so far. So today I want to talk to you about a doer of the word does not judge. Mm -hmm. right? I want you to really open up your heart in this teaching. Because this, there's so much good stuff in here. And I can tell you everybody at some point has been a judge. Oh yeah. But when you really let the word of God soak into your heart, you will stop judging. When you really know what it does. All right? So let's all open our hearts, open our minds, <laughs> open our ears. Okay? <laughs> I'm just doing this little disclaimer because when I was doing it, I was like, wow. Ouch. <laughs> Ooh, okay, Lord. <laughs> so let's turn over to Matthew 6. A doer of the word is not a judge. Okay. So Matthew 6. The, the chapter of Matthew 6, it, one of the main themes throughout that chapter is talking about hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. Right? And so Matthew, and it's all, this is all Jesus talking. Okay? <clears throat> So Matthew chapter 6, we're going to start at verse 5. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray, standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Right? And so let me give you the definition of a hypocrite. A hypocrite is a person who pretends to have virtues, moral or religious beliefs, principles, etc., that he or she does not actually possess. Mm. Especially a person whose actions belie stated beliefs. They're the opposite of those stated beliefs, what their actions are doing, right? A pretender or an actor, and not in the professional sense of an actor, at least with an actor we know that they're pretending, right? <laughs> Okay, but this is like a professional actor in life, right? Let me get, I'm going to give you that definition again, okay? A hypocrite is a person who pretends to have virtues, moral or religious beliefs or principles, etc., 
that he or she does not actually possess. Mm. Especially a person whose actions are the opposite of those stated beliefs. A pretender or an actor. All right, now let's go down to Matthew chapter 7. We're going to read verses 1 through 2 right now. And I'm going to read out of the New Living Translation because that really just brings it home. Mm -hmm. So Matthew chapter 7 verse 1, Judge not, do not judge others, and you will not be judged. For you will be treated as you treat others. Mm -hmm. The standard you use in judging is the same standard by which you, you will be judged. Did you hear that? Yep. Did you hear that? I'm going to read it again, okay? Matthew 7, chapter 1, this is the New Living Translation. Do not judge others. So is there any time where we can judge? No. 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 So it doesn't say do not judge others unless, right? No, that's not what the scripture says. It says do not judge others and you, all right, say me, me, will not be judged. Will not, will not be, be judged. judged. Right? And then verse 2. For you will be treated as you treat others. The standard, all right, look at this. The standard you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged. Right? So how are we going to be judged? By the same standard. By the same standard that we judge others. All right, now let's keep reading verse 3. And why behold, now I'm, I'm going over into King James, okay? And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but consider not the beam that is in thine own eye? Right? Now, I went to the Greek to find out what is a mote. And a mote is a piece of straw. Do you see this? Mm-hmm. You see, this, a piece of straw. Eric, come in, come and help me. All right, put your stuff down. <laughs> okay. All right. So you you hold that. That's yours. All right. Now a beam is a stick of timber. All right. Like like a beam. Okay. So here's my beam. <laughs> now let's let's compare. All right. Okay. So this is the moat, and this is the beam. All right. And so the scripture is saying. Why behold is the moat, the moat that is in your brother's eye, and you're not taking care of the beam in yours? Mm -hmm. All right, now put that in front of your face. All right, yeah. All right, and then look, <laughs> and look at the beam that's in front of my face. All right, let's keep reading. Oh, or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the moat? Out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye. Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. Now, can I clearly see Eric with this beam in front of my face? <laughs> no. Let me, I'm going to describe to you what I can see. All right, and this is just kind of like, you know, a little distance from me. I can see his elbow, I can see his shoulder, I can see a little bit of his hand, and I can see both of his legs and feet. Am I seeing the whole picture? No. no. This is why God says you can't judge. When you judge, you have a beam in front of your eye, and you're not seeing clearly the whole picture. Amen. Right? Now, the beam that he has in his eye, <laughs> can he see more than I can see? Yes. yes. Absolutely. Right? I mean, look at that little little piece of straw compared to this beam. Right? What's more important, the straw or the beam that we need to take care of? The beam. The beam. The beam. We need to take care of the beam and not worry about the straw that's in our brother or sister's eye. That's right. Amen. Right? And there's so many people that think, you can sit down now. There's so, you can put that, yeah, put that right there. So many people think that because they have an opinion or they know more or whatever, that they have the right to judge others. And they don't. Let me read. Go over to James chapter 4, 
verse 11, right? Because I'm going to... So from Matthew chapter 7, a judge is a hypocrite. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. Right? You hypocrite. Cast the bean out of your own eye first, then you can help your brother. Okay? So being a judge is being a hypocrite. Right? James chapter 4, verse 11. Brothers and sisters, do not slander one another. Anyone who speaks against a brother or sister or judges them speaks against the law and judges it. When you judge the law, you are not keeping it, but sitting in judgment on it. So when you are judging others, you are not doing what you just said. Mm -hmm. Amen. Let me give you some phrases that judges do. How you know that you're being a judge is when you've said this. They shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> they should, that is wrong. They shouldn't be doing that. You're judging. You're judging, right? They need to do this. I would never do that. I would never do that. I mean, don't they know this is what they need to be doing? I can't believe they did that. That's not right. They shouldn't be doing that. They should be doing this. <laughs> no. You're not supposed to be doing that. You need to do this. You ever heard those phrases? Yeah. You ever heard those phrases come out of your mouth? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, when someone talks like that, you're a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, Amen. You're a hypocrite. Because the Bible is, we just read in James chapter 4, when you say those things, you are not doing those things that you just said that they should be doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Too strong. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Think back. When was the last time I said, well, they shouldn't be doing that? How are you doing that? Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. it's a little quiet in here. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> right? See, all of that is judging. And you can't be like, oh, well, no. That's not judging. I'm just saying. Saying is judging. Wow. Saying is judging. Well, but you know, I can't help it, Pastor. I've got a spirit of discernment. <laughs> I've heard that. I've got a spirit of discernment. Yeah, but that's kind of funny that you never turn that spirit of discernment around on you. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. You're more focused on your neighbors than you are on yourself. No, that's not a spirit of discernment. That's a spirit of judging. That's a spirit of judging. When we judge others based on what we think that they should or shouldn't be doing, when we know we're not even doing it ourselves. Amen? Amen. Yeah. And one of the things is that why this is so important to really understand is because that person is not going to be judged based on what you said. Who's going to be judged based on what you said? Ourselves. You will. Yep. You will be judged based on what you said. That's right. Okay? You will be judged based on what you said. So if you're a judge, you're not a doer. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's right. Ouch. That's yeah. Right. Yep. Ouch. Yep. If you're judging other people based on what you think that they should be doing, you're not a doer of the word. <coughs> right? Because you're, you're sitting there and you're talking about somebody's moat. And you're not focused on the, the beam. Mm -hmm. And see, because you're not focused on the beam, you get used to the beam. <laughs> and the beam gets real comfortable. And the beam, you, you can, um, you know, make allowances and you can start to kind of learn how to live, you know, around the beam. And then the, but the beam's still there. And the beam is clouding your judgment, right? Mm -hmm. It's hindering your vision. And because this beam is in front of you, even though you've made allowances and you can kind of see around it and you can, you know, drive around it and you can, you know, still serve the Lord and do things. This beam is hindering 
you from truly walking and seeing the whole entire picture. Because this beam is there, you're not asking the Holy Spirit about it. You've deceived yourselves into thinking it's not there. Yep. What beam? What are you talking about? What beam? You know? What beam? And then this is where patience comes in. Right? You want to be a minister? You want to be a Christian? <laughs> okay? We're not even talking about pastors or ministers. This is just being a Christian. You want to be a real Christian? We've got to work on the beam that's in front of us. Mm-hmm. And see, when we work on the beam that's in front of us, we're not going to judge others. We're not going to be focused on what they're doing or what they're not doing. And when we do see something, because we've taken care of the moat, oh, wow. <laughs> we can see things a little bit more clearer, and we can ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you know, this doesn't seem quite right. What do you say about it? A judge will just assume things. Right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's true or not. A judge doesn't look at all of the information. Mm -hmm. They just see something, heard something, and then they just immediately have an opinion about it. Without even hearing the whole story, right? Mm -hmm. Hearing the whole story or finding out what's going on with that person, they just judge. Well, this person did this, and they said that they were going to do this, and then they didn't do it. And, you know, that's just not right. Well, how many times have you said something that you were going to do and you didn't do it? That's right. That's right. Hmm? Yeah, but I'm not talking about myself right now. But you shouldn't be talking about that other person right now. (laughs) You need to get get rid of the beam in front of your face. You don't know what's happened. You don't know. See, there's always three sides to every story. His side, her side, and then the truth. Mm -hmm. And you know who the truth is? The Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit to help you. And see, if you're going to judge, you're not going to see it clearly. You're not a doer of the word. You're a hypocrite. You're a hypocrite. Think back. Really, truly think back. Let's just have a (laughs) come-to-Jesus meeting right now and think back, Lord, where, where was there a time that I judged and I was doing the same thing. Because yeah. 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 I know I know a lot of you come and you tell me, oh, so-and-so is not doing this and so-and-so is doing this. <laughs> you know, that's not right. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, and a lot of times I just sit there and I just listen and I go, mm-hmm, thinking in the back of my head, you've done the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. You've done the exact same thing. You don't see it. <laughs> And so I just go, well, you know, we're just going to need to pray for that person. I don't know all that's going on. I know that that's what they said that they were going to do. And maybe something came up. And, you know, but that's really between them and the Lord. Mm-hmm. You know? Yes. See, we got to focus on ourselves. Yes. If we're focused so much on what everybody else is doing, we're not focused on ourselves and what we should be doing. Yep. We don't want to judge. You don't want to be a hypocrite, do you? And see, when you say, you know, when I was going through that, this is what the Lord showed me. This is how he helped me. That's taking care of the beam in your eye so that you can help somebody else get rid of the the straw Mm -hmm. out of their eye. Mm -hmm. Right? A, A doer of the word knows what it takes to get out of situations. A doer of the word knows what it takes to to honor your word, even to your own hurt at times. Mm -hmm. That's good. And they're not going to judge. They're they're going to extend mercy. They're going to (coughs) extend grace. Amen? Okay? Let's go. Um, Let's go over to Romans chapter 2, verse 1. I'm glad I didn't say this. This is not pastor. This is the word of God. Okay? Romans chapter 2. Verse 1. And I'm going to read out of the New Living Translation. It says, you may think you can condemn such people, but you are just as bad 
and you have no excuse. When you say they are wicked and should be punished, you are condemning yourself. For you who judge others do this very same things. Wow. That's pretty clear, isn't it? Yeah. When you're judging others, you are doing the very same thing that you are judging them of. And you might be like, no, no, that can't be. What? Yeah. The word of God, is the word of God truth or is it a lie? Truth. It's truth. So when you're judging somebody else based on what they didn't do or what they should have done or what they are doing, that they shouldn't be doing, you know, all of that stuff, you are doing those very same things. I think sometimes it makes us feel better if we're judging somebody else. Oh, well, they're doing this and they're doing that. They're, you know, you feel a little bit better because the, the light's not on you. Mm -hmm. And you can justify your behavior a little bit by complaining about this other person. Well, you know, they didn't do this and they didn't do that. And they, you know, it's like, well, that reveals right there what you're doing or what you're not doing. James chapter 5. Let's go over to James chapter 5. <laughs> I love the Lord. <laughs> James chapter 5, verse 9. says, Don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. The King James says, Judge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door, right? So the person who is judging is doing the same thing. It might be a different situation, but the response or the result is the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you can, well, that's a different situation. <laughs> no, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. You're judging this person because of what they've done or what they haven't done, and yet in the, a different situation, you are responding the exact same way. Why are you complaining? Why are you judging against this person when you are doing the same thing? You're not taking care of the beam in your eye. You're trying to take care of this moat, this little piece of straw here, and you cannot see clearly because you still have this beam. <laughs> That's right. Thank you, Lord. What's more important, the moat in your neighbor's eye or the beam in front of you? The beam in front of me. The beam in front of you. And this is why the Lord is saying, don't be deceived, but be a doer of the word. By you being a doer of the word, you're going to, this beam is going to get into focus. Like I said, we can, get, we can deceive ourselves and we can get used to this beam and not think that it's there, but it's there. Mm -hmm. And until you focus on it, see, when you're focused on it, then all of you guys are just kind of blurry. Because you're like in the background, but my focus is on this beam. When I'm focused on others, the beam is out of focus. This is right here, and so I'm going to try and look around it, all, all, all around it, and not it's not focused. But see, when we focus on it, then it's just me and this beam. And I'm going to focus on it, and I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit about it. And see, this is what's happening. A lot of people are, well, why isn't anything going right? Why isn't anything, why, why is the Lord blessing this person and that person? And they're doing this and they're doing that. Judging. Mm -hmm. yep. And the Holy Spirit's saying, focus on this. Did you think about this? Well, <clears throat> that's not very important right now. <laughs> you, know, the, the, you know, but but I see, you know, a Andrea over here, she, she's blessed and but she's not doing this. And, and, and the Lord said to do this. And she's not doing it, but she got blessed. <laughs> that's yeah, that's, that's Andrea. And you know what? I don't know all that's going on with Andrea. But, you know, if the Lord's blessing her, there's a reason. So yeah. don't focus on that. You focus on your being. That's right. Well, I just don't understand. I just don't get it. She shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> she should not be doing that. It's none of your business. Amen. It's none of your business. Amen. It really isn't any of your business what other people are doing. Especially if it's to other people and you're not even involved. Amen. 
<laughs> we just pause because so many people they feel like they have to get involved in stuff. <laughs> it's like, mm, no. It's like you know, as pastor, you don't need to get involved in everything. I don't get involved in all of your little squirmishes. <laughs> it's like y'all need to work that out. So unless it starts, you know, affecting me, and they're like, mm, no. You can come to me and you can get advice about how to handle it. I'll be more than glad to help you with that, but I'm not going to do it for you. And I'm not going to be on your side. A lot of the wives were doing that. Oh, do you know what my husband did? <laughs> Judging. Mm -hmm. He did this. He just wants sex all the time. And then, 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 then. He's like, well, it's okay. So that when you want it, <laughs> like, what's the difference here? <laughs> he acted like this and that. Blah, 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 blah. And it was like, oh, yeah. Oh, that's really unfortunate. Oh, I'm so sorry. But you know what? You need to go home and you need to go love your husband. What? <laughs> yep. You need to go home and you need to go love your husband. Wow. Okay. Mm. Wow. And then all of a sudden things start changing. Amen. True stories. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> True stories. Yep. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I know. That is unfortunate. And that, and yeah, you know, he may shouldn't. Shouldn't have done that, but, you know, it is what it is for right now. And he doesn't see the light as you do. And see, what happens is when we judge others, one of the reasons why we'll be judged that way is because you are saying you have revelation and light in that area. Mm -hmm. And God will take you at your word, and he will say, all right, they say that they have light and they have revelation of this, so what are they doing? And he will judge you based on what you say. Amen. That's why it's a big deal. Can you, thinking back on what you have said about others, can you stand up to your standard? Based on what you've complained about, judged about, all that, can you say that you're doing all of those things? Consistently. Yeah. No. <laughs> Usually not. <laughs> it's like, so you can't judge. Stop judging and just focus on yourself. You know, sometimes it's really easy to talk a good game, but when we actually get into the game, it's a different story, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I like football. <laughs> I really like football. And it's easy for me to sit on my couch and go, what? He should have caught that. What? He should have seen that. What? Well, I have an aerial view of the field. And I am perfectly safe in my little recliner. So there isn't, you know, a 300-pound man <laughs> running at me <laughs> wanting to kill me, you know? <laughs> so, I mean, I can see all stuff, but I'm not on that field. I don't see what they see or what they don't see. I don't know what they're feeling. You know, they play m many different games, and some of the games they're playing beat up. <laughs> no? And so, yeah, they may have caught in that, but you know what? We don't know. Maybe they, sh they sprained a finger. As a receiver, you sprain a finger, man, catching a ball, it affects the whole way you catch a ball because yeah. it hurts every time you catch it because those balls are hard. <laughs> and we're saying, you should have caught that. Uh, no. <laughs> or maybe they have a bruised rib. We don't know about that because they don't put all every single injury that they have. They only put the injuries that they have that will cause them to sit out of a game. Yes. But they don't put every single injury in there. So it's easy for me to just base it sitting on my couch. But when I actually get in the game... So I stopped that. <laughs> stopped this a long time ago because I was like, you know what, you're right. Like, I shouldn't be judging them based on what they did or didn't do on the field because I'm not there. And I would probably be running the other way, <laughs> the wrong way, seeing this huge man chasing me. I'd be like, ah, here, here's the ball, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, no, I don't want to get hit by those guys because you're running full speed. They're running full speed. Oh, that yes. hurts. Oh, yes. And they have pads. Mm -hmm. Those pads don't do anything. They just hit harder. <laughs> they do. They hit harder. It hurts. Yeah. 
So I shouldn't be judging just because of what I see. Because what I see might not be the whole truth. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. See, a doer of the word is careful with what they say about others. Yes. And the reason why they're careful with what they say about others is because they know a doer of the word knows that they're going to be judged based on what they say. On what they say. Let's go over to Luke 19.22. Luke chapter 19 verse 22. And it says, and this is the parable of the pounds, right? where um, the servant owed uh, money. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or not, didn't owe, I'm sorry, didn't owe money. This was the, um, this is the parable where the, the uh, king gave the pounds to the servants, mm -hmm. okay? <laughs> sorry. And so he came back. So verse 22, and he said unto him, out of thine own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Thou knewest that I was an austere man, taking up that I laid down, and reaping that I did not sow. Wherefore, even gavest not thou my money into the bank, that at my coming I might have required my own with usury, with interest. All right? And so he's saying, so if we go back up to verse 21, all right, the serv this is what the servant said. For I feared thee, because thou art an austere man, Thou takest up that thou layest down, not down, and reapest that thou didst not sow. Right? So he's saying, this is the reason why I'm giving you back your pound, because this is what I knew of you. That didn't please the king. It didn't please him at all. And he said, okay, I'm going to judge you based on what you said. You knew that I was an austere man. You knew that. You knew I was expecting a return on my money. That's what he said in lay terms, right? And you still didn't do anything with it. So you will be judged based on what you knew. See, you're going to be judged based on what you know. Not what you think other people should do, but what you know. And some people don't know what you know. So you can't assume. You can't be like, well, they know. They know. No. <laughs> Who told you that? Who told? Even I don't know all that you know. The Holy Spirit has to tell me. No, they know that. Because you can't hide. Don't try to manipulate and hide that. Well, I don't know that. No, God knows what you know. He knows the light. He knows the revelation that you know that you should be doing. So you don't you don't play that game. Well, I don't really know. I didn't know that. Come on. Don't play games with the Lord. Yeah. You don't want to play games with the Lord because that's not good. Matthew 12, 37. Go over to Matthew 12, 37. I want you to see this. Matthew 12, 37. Is everybody there? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Let's get everybody there because I want you to see this. Matthew 12, 37 says, For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. So either your words are going to help justify you or they're going to condemn you. This is why you want to be careful what you say. Especially about others. Especially about others. Because we are not the judge. Are you the judge? No. Who's the judge? God. God is the judge. Mm-hmm. God is the judge, and he judges through the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we, we can't judge. And there is a very fine line, you know, as leaders in leadership and in church. You know, it's not us judging. It's the Holy Spirit doing it. Because we shouldn't be saying anything unless the Holy Spirit said to say something. Amen. Because the Holy Spirit knows where people are at. I don't, I don't know where you guys are at, but the Holy Spirit can tell me where you're at. That's right. So any correction or direction or, or anything that the Lord is doing, it's by his spirit. It's not by what I think you should do. Because I don't know what you should do. 
but the Holy Spirit knows what you should be doing. Mm-hmm. And see, that's how you get keep yourself out of being a judge, is by following the Holy Spirit. Amen. And like I said, there are times where the Holy Spirit will have you say things not so blunt. Mm-hmm. You know, somebody who likes to gossip and talk about everybody, the Lord might say, you know... You seem to be very worried about everybody around you. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit wants you to focus on your family and, and, and yourself right now. <laughs> and you're like, what? <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I, you know, when you hear um, how people minister to people that you know have done wrong, Oh, you know I've done wrong. And you're like, come on, get him, Lord. Get him. And, 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 and that prophet goes, you know, the Lord says that you are the apple of his eye. What? <laughs> <laughs> he has many blessings for you. And here's some changes that are going to come into mm-hmm. your life. You're like, that okay. is not what I meant by getting them, Lord. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You know, it was like, they've done this. And I just think, Lord, you are just so loving and so full of mercy and grace. Mm -hmm. He gives people opportunities to change. Mm -hmm. And they are, (laughs) he gives them a lot longer to change than we do. Mm -hmm. Because we think they should get it. When maybe they haven't gotten it. Maybe they haven't gotten it, but you are not the judge. The Holy Spirit in you. And even then, it's going to be mercy and grace and love that will be extended. Amen. Amen? Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Let's look at a Bible example. Because I really want you to see this spirit of judging. Okay? Let's look at a Bible example. John chapter 12. John chapter 12. And this is when Mary came and brought the the perfume Mm -hmm. for Jesus, okay? But I'm going to read verses 1 through 5, right? And I want you to really, we're going to judge this, okay? (laughs) We're going to judge it by noticing where that spirit of judging is, okay? We really want to evaluate this, okay? So... Uh, John chapter 12, verse 1. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Verse 3. Then took Mary a pound of ointment from um, spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with an odor of the ointment. Then, verse 4, Then said one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? Is Judas judging? Yep. Yeah. He's judging two people here, actually. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. He's judging Mary, number one, for anointing Jesus with such expensive perfume, right? He's judging her, but he's also judging Jesus because Jesus didn't correct her or rebuke her. He let her do it. So he's judging two people. Do you see that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You see how he's judging? Like, why was that ointment not sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? Does Judas care about the poor? No. no. <laughs> you know, because you know, why would he judge? Why would he say something like that? He Mary didn't take this from him. Exactly. This wasn't money that Judas gave to Mary. That's right. This wasn't you know anointment that that you know he wanted or he had given to her. He had nothing to do with this. That's right. You know, verse six. Right, verse six tells us the reason why, and some of you already guessed it. Verse 6 says, This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag 
and bear that was put in it. He wanted that money for himself. He was mad because he couldn't get his hands on that money. He was a hypocrite. He didn't care about the poor. Because if he truly cared about the poor, he would be doing everything in his power mm -hmm. to take care of the poor. That's right. But he was stealing. He was stealing from the back. Mm -hmm. Right? He didn't care about the poor. What he really cared about was himself. He wanted the money for himself. And he was mad because he couldn't get his hands on that money. So he pretended, he pretended, he acted like he cared for the poor by saying what he said. But it was actually inappropriate. He shouldn't have said anything. Because he didn't care. He's a hypocrite. Right? A hypocrite is a person who pretends to have virtues, moral, or religious beliefs, or principles, etc., that he or she does not actually possess. You see, he didn't care about the poor, so he didn't care about that money going to the poor. He cared about that money getting into his pocket so that he could take some of it. There's a lot of money that was going through Jesus' ministry. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you that. Mm -hmm. And how do I know that? Because you can't steal money Come on. Right? <laughs> from a ministry that has a little bit. Because mm -hmm. you, you're counting every penny. You need every single penny mm -hmm. to do what he was, Jesus was doing. He was feeding all the disciples that were with him. and Take Yeah. Took care of all the families. I mean, there was a lot of money mm -hmm. that was going exactly. through that Judas was so... He was skimming and nobody was noticing. There's a lot of money coming through. Yep. But he didn't care about the poor. Because right. if he did, he wouldn't be focused on Mary and what she was doing with Jesus. Yeah. He'd be focused on what he had available to him, the resources that he had, and that he was giving all of his resources to help the poor. That's right. Be. Because in the end, what, what's 300 pounds? Nothing. Really? What's 300 pounds? No, he didn't care. He didn't care at all. He was judging Mary. Now, was Mary judged by what Judas said? No, he wasn't. No, she wasn't. Who was judged by what he said? He was. He was. He was judged by what he said because a few days later, he sold Jesus out for 30 pieces of silver. Mm-hmm. And when he tried to return it, <laughs> they didn't care. Mm -hmm. And he went out and he hung himself. Mm -hmm. yep. Because he did not extend mercy and grace, he did not reap mercy and grace. That's right. He got judged by what he said others should be doing. This is why we shouldn't be judging others. Mm -hmm. you know? If you were a doer, you're not going to judge. If you yeah. judge, you're not doing. That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's good. Amen? Amen. And see, this is the deception that many people fall into, is that they think that they're excluded or that they're exempt from certain things because they're not a pastor or they're not a minister or they're not even a Christian. Mm -hmm. A lot of non-Christians think, oh, you know, as a Christian, you should be doing this and you should be doing that. Well, they don't really know. Yeah. And they're not, and we're not going to be judged based on what they said. Mm -hmm. We will be judged based on what we say. We say. Mm -hmm. They will be judged based on what they said. Christian or non-Christian. Mm -hmm. In the church, you're you're going to be judged by what you say. See, this is why we have to be careful because we don't see the whole picture. You don't want to be very judgmental and critical of your leaders. Right. Well, they should be doing this and they should be doing that and they Thank should be teaching Lord. this and they should be teaching that. You don't see the whole picture. Come on. That's right. Thank you, Lord. You don't see a whole picture. Because, there, yeah, there's a lot, there's a whole list of teachings that I have in the back of my head. <laughs> but I can't teach what I think I should teach. I need to teach what the Holy Spirit says to teach. Amen. Amen. And this isn't all the teaching that you should be going through anyway. If you need something extra, that's what you need to be doing during the week. Amen. Amen. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just like Kelly 
Kelly said, she's listening to diligence. Well, we really haven't been talking about diligence. We've been talking about being a doer of the word, but being diligent is part of being a doer of the word. She needs that extra stuff. Steve's talking about thankfulness. So he's getting a teaching on thankfulness. That's being a doer of the word. That's right. Thank you, Lord. This is why we can't judge. Because we don't know where people are fully at. We don't know all the light that they're getting. And they might be walking in all the light that they have. All the revelation that they have. They might be walking through all of that. And it might be just like this, like a little, like very, very small little light. But it's the light that they're walking in. So this is another reason why we shouldn't judge because we don't know where they're at. Only the Holy Spirit knows where that they're where they're at. Yes. And this is why you have to keep talking to Him and keep acknowledging the Lord, and just leave them to the Lord. Because how many of you? How many of you have been judged mm-hmm. by other people? Mm-hmm. You've been, and and what did you say? You go, well, they don't know the whole situation. They don't know me. They don't know what's going on. They don't know that this happened, right? You start getting defensive because you're like, they don't know me. They don't know all the whole story, yeah. right? And you might think, well, no, I know the whole story. I know. I talked to his wife, and I talked to his friend. And you didn't talk to him. You didn't talk to her. Why are you judging? You don't know the whole story. You don't know everything that's happened. And you don't know what's going on on the inside of somebody. Right? Right. You know, we think we might handle certain situations a certain way, but you're not really going to know until you're in it. You're not really going to know until you're in it. Because there's some difficult situations that I would like to think that I would handle very well, but you know what? I'm not going to know until it actually happens. And this is why we God is not is telling us, judge not, lest ye be judged. Because he knows whatever you say out of your mouth, you are going to be judged. Because that's what you're saying. You're saying, I know. And if you're saying that you know, then you should be exhibiting that behavior. Amen. But when you are complaining and you are judging about others, you're not. That's right. Because that's what the scripture says. And you can try and justify and try and say, well, no, I'm not. But you are. You're, you're not doing what you are judging that person to do. You're a hypocrite. Mm-hmm. Amen. And see, this is where God wants us to clean it up. Thank you, Lord. How many know? How many can come up to another level? Ooh, I all of us. Every hand thank should be raised. Lord. <laughs> every hand should be raised. Be right? <laughs> we all can come up another level in this. Oh yes, we can, Lord. Right? We all can come up another level. Because it doesn't make any difference. The scriptures are very clear. They apply to everyone, right? Yeah. yeah. Everyone. Yeah. <laughs> everyone. Let's go over to Romans 14. There's another example. Romans 14, and we're going to read uh, verses 10 through 13. So Romans 14, verse 10. But why doest thou judge thy brother? Or why doest thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account to, of himself to God. Verse 12, who's going to give account? Everyone. Every single person is going to give an account of himself to God. Right? And it's based on everything that you have said. This is why you want to be really careful what you say. Because you're going to be judged based on that. All right? Verse 13, let us not therefore judge one another anymore. But judge this rather that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. Right? See, God is going to hold you accountable with what you say. And we are not qualified to judge. That's why God is saying don't judge. Because we don't know all sides of the story. You may think that you do. 
even when you get as much information as possible, right? Even if you're one side of the situation that you are in, let me tell you, even if you're in it, you cannot judge because you don't know the whole story. Because you don't know what that other person has gone through. You don't know what that other person is thinking. You don't know. And yes, their behavior, their actions may be inappropriate. They might not be right, but you are still not to judge. Mm -hmm. That's right. Because you're not the judge. You're not the judge. We are called to love one another. Ooh. Right? Yes, Lord. Yes. yes. That's what the doer of the word does. They yes. love one another, yes. whether you deserve it or not. Yes, Lord. Right? Whether that person deserves it or not, we continue to love. Yes. Someone has an attitude, we don't get an attitude back. Yes. And you know why? This is one of the reasons why the Lord keeps repeating himself here. Amen. Thank you, Lord. He keeps saying the same stuff over and over and over again, doesn't he? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you think, well, come on. You know, these people, they should get it by now. Why do we keep saying the same? Well, obviously... <laughs> You know, they're not. Somebody's not getting it. But God's mercy and his grace and his love is so abounding, okay, that he gives everyone the opportunity to get it. Amen. And this is another reason why I think he keeps repeating the same stuff because he's like, they don't get it yet. Keep saying it again. Keep saying it again. I mean, Rochelle, she gave the testimony up here. You know, she said, I mean, I've talked about tithing. Well, and she's like, well, the third time, I was like, oh, kind of hit her. Like, oh, maybe. Uh, you know, and not to say that she wasn't tithing, but, you know, it wasn't. <laughs> and so it's like the Lord was dealing. So he just said, just say it again. Just say it again. Just say it again. Just keep saying it again. Just keep saying it again. Because they're going to get it. Mm -hmm. Just keep saying it, and they'll get it. Mm -hmm. Right? This is why you got to walk. This is walking by faith. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because I could be like, I'm not saying that, Lord. They should know it already. Right? Mm -hmm. But then that would make me the judge, wouldn't it? Yeah. Right? And and who's the judge? Oh, God. God. Oh, God. <laughs> God's the judge, not me. I'm not the judge. I don't know what you need. So I got to ask the Lord. I'm constantly asking the Lord, okay, Lord, what, what teaching do you want to go? What, what do you want to do this time? Where are the people at this week? Because it's like, it's changed. Since the beginning of the year, I thought, oh, well, I'll teach on this, and then this, and then this. And it's like, Lord's like, no, I'm not going to teach on that. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. We got to teach on this. And we go, oh, oh, okay. And we'll get into this. Oh, okay. Well, so I can't do it based on what I see and what I hear. Because I hear a lot. You guys don't know, I hear a lot. And the Lord tells me a lot. But that doesn't mean that I just jump on people and... A lot of times the Lord's just showing me just to show me. And this is the other reason where people kind of get off. The Lord starts showing them stuff, and then they think that they should then share that information with everybody. you got to ask the Lord if that's just for you. If it's just for you, then, okay, Lord, if it's just for me, what do you want me to do about it? And he said, just pray for them. Okay, I can pray for them. And see, sometimes the Lord will give you information to see what are you going to do about it. What are you going to do with it? Are you still going to walk in love with that person? Are you still going to treat them the same? Because see, when you're faithful with a little, you'll be faithful with much. Let's go over to Romans 14. Oh, wait, we're already in Romans 14. Let's go up the chapter. That's what I meant. Okay, so we're in Romans 14. Let's go up to chap verse 3 and 4. Right? Because um, they were talking in this chapter about food. Okay? And this is why at the end of the chapter they're saying, stop judging one another. <laughs> right? Because they're like, you know, complaining about what people are eating, what they're not eating, and all of this stuff. And so Romans 14, 3 and 4, I'm, re I'm going to read out of the New Living Translation. It says, those who feel free to eat anything must not look down on those who don't. And those who don't eat certain foods must not condemn those who do. For God has accepted them. 
Who are you to condemn someone else's servant? Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. Who are you? Is he talking to you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's talking to me. All right. Who are you to condemn someone else's servant? Their own master will judge whether they stand or fall. And with the Lord's help, they will stand and receive his approval. Wow. Look at, look at that. Do you see the love in that? Because it's saying the master will judge whether they stand or fall. And with the Lord's help, they will continue to stand. They will stand. He doesn't want people to fall. That's right. That's the good part. So he said, with the Lord's help, they will stand and they will receive approval. So stop worrying about your neighbor, what they're eating, what they're not eating, right? I mean, these guys, the guys, they were judging each other based on what they're eating, what they're not eating, what they're doing, what they're not doing. And, and, and you know what? The Lord is saying, stop it. Just stop it. Don't judge my servant. You know, I was um, listening to a teaching, and um, I heard this story about Kenneth Hagin. And he was at a pastor's meeting, and these pastors were talking about another pastor. And another pastor had just gotten remarried. And in that denomination, once you got a divorce, you couldn't remarry again. And so they were really upset and just judging this pastor. And, da, 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 and you know, and Pastor Hagen kind of got into it and was just like, mm, you know, yeah, you know, <laughs> he said a few things. And, and then when he went home, he went to sleep and um, the Lord woke him up. And he's like, hmm, what's going on? And he started praying a little bit, and the Lord said, who are you to judge my servant? And he's like, what? And then the Lord said again, who are you to judge my brother? Whoa. And then he knew immediately what he was talking about. And he noticed that the Lord called the pastor his brother. He was still in the family. And I was like, what's going on? Well, I think uh, maybe a few months had passed or a year had passed. And he actually met that pastor that they were talking about. And he sat down with him and he said, well, you know, my wife left me. And she had, um, uh, I think she had been diagnosed with a mental illness. And so she left he was praying for her to come back, for them to reconcile. She didn't want to reconcile. She didn't want to come back. And um, so he's, he said, I just felt a release to let her go because she did not want to. And it was a long time that he had, st had stood, you know, but he just felt that the Lord said. And then when this lady came, they did everything right. They courted, they, you know, holy, all of that stuff. And he had little kids and all that. And so they just, you know, prayed about it and got the peace to get married. And so uh, Pastor Hagen was like, yeah. He's like, and, and from that, from then on, he stopped judging. Mm -hmm. Then when other pastors came to him talking about what other pastors were doing and all that, he didn't say anything. He just was like, well, you know, <laughs> you don't know everything, so we just got to give it over to the Lord. So we don't know the whole side of the story. And we can't just judge because we think that they should be doing something that they might be doing. You don't know. You don't know. So we want to be careful that we, we're not judging because of what we think people should or shouldn't be doing. We should be focused on what the Lord's telling us to do. How many have enough to do with what the Lord has told you to do? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? When you focus on that, you're not going to be bothered by what everybody else is doing. Maybe the Lord will show you some stuff, and then that's for you to take to your prayer closet to pray for them. Right? But you know what? There is a fix to this. It's not like, oh, man, you know, I've done that before. I've judged other people. <laughs> you know, this isn't a message to condemn you. But this is a message of joy and freedom yeah. because we don't have to continue to do that. Yeah, There's you. repentance. That's right. Amen. Yeah. There is repentance. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank Woo. you, God. You know, and, and repentance isn't just saying I'm sorry. 
right? We've talked about that. Mm -hmm. But repentance means turning and changing, Amen. right? Turning from judging. So we're not going to judge others anymore. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen? We're not going to judge others, but we are going to turn from that, and we are going to stay focused on Jesus. Amen. Amen? Amen. And so it, whether we hear something or see something, we are not going to be quick to judge. Mm -hmm. We're going to ask the Holy Spirit. And we're going to ask the Holy Spirit, you know, is there something that we need to do? And if there's nothing that we need to do, then we're going to pray and we're going to continue to love on our brothers and sisters. Amen? Amen. Amen. Because it's the goodness of God that causes men to repent. Yeah. Yep. Right? And it's like mankind. It's the goodness. It's not you being a sourpuss and rejecting and, you know, excommunicating them. <laughs> You laugh, but that's happened. Yeah. Yeah. It's, happened it's happened in churches. Whole churches have excommunicated people. Catholic Church does that. I don't know if they can do They still do it, but because you know, they're changing. They're changing. <laughs> they're changing. <laughs> you know? But, you know, we don't want to just excommunicate because we think, oh, well, they did this, and so-and-so told me this about it. And it's like, okay, you just heard, like, one little side of the story. You know? Don't be so quick to judge. And maybe God wants you to use you to bring reconciliation. Did you ever think about that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And instead you're making it worse mm -hmm. by judging and, and, and taking sides. We don't want to take sides. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so say, I'm not the judge. I'm, I'm not, not the, the judge. judge. I am not the judge. I am, I am not, not the, the judge. judge. There is a judge. There, there is, is a judge. judge. It is God. It is God. And I'm not him. And I'm not him. I am not the judge. I am not the judge. Hallelujah. James 2, 12 and 13 says, So whatever you say or whatever you do, remember that you will be judged by the law that sets you free. There will be no mercy for those who have not shown mercy to others. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. But if you have been merciful, God will be merciful when he judges you. Amen. Amen? Amen. So instead of being judgmental and critical, what are we supposed to do? Mercy. Extend mercy. mercy, extend grace. Right? So instead of being judgmental and critical, what are we supposed to do? Extend so mercy and grace. Extend mercy and extend grace. I'm going to say that again. Instead of being judgmental and critical, what are we to do? Extend, extend mercy, mercy and extend, extend grace. grace. Amen? Why? Because when you sow mercy and you sow grace, what are you going to reap back? Mercy, mercy and grace. grace. Mercy and grace. All right? So when you fall, when you miss it, instead of people being judgmental and critical towards you, they're going to extend mercy and grace. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. So repeat after. We're going to say this prayer. Amen. Amen. And I want you to repeat after me. Amen. Okay? Because I think at some point in all of our lives, we have been judgmental and oh, critical. Yes. Amen? Yeah. Amen. All right? <laughs> so guys, why don't you stand up on your feet? Yes. Get the blood flowing a little bit. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. <clears throat> Lord, we just thank you. We thank you. All right, so repeat after me. Father God, Father God forgive, me forgive me for saying anything, for saying anything, or, doing anything or doing anything that may have been judgmental or critical towards a brother or sister. Or critical towards a brother or sister. Towards any of your people, towards any of your people, your leaders, your leaders, or anyone in general, or anyone, anyone in general. general. I ask you to forgive me. I ask, I ask you to forgive, forgive me. me. I am not the judge. I am, I am not, not the judge. judge. I am not qualified to judge. I am not qualified to judge. I don't see enough. I don't, I don't see enough. enough. I don't do enough. I don't, I don't do enough. enough. I don't know enough. I don't know enough. It's not my place to judge. It's not my place to judge. You are the judge. You are the judge. The only qualified judge. The only qualified judge. Thank you for showing me a better way. Thank you for showing me a better way. And I thank you, Lord. And I thank you, Lord. That I extend mercy. That I extend mercy. I extend grace. I extend grace. And I extend love. And I extend love. Because I am not the judge. Because I am not the judge. You are. You are. Thank you. And I receive your forgiveness. Lord. I receive your forgiveness, Lord. And today, and today, I make the decision. I make the decision not to judge. Not to judge. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. That was 
Lori just fell. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, wow. <Jesus. laughs> Hallelujah. See that? Do you yeah. feel a change there? Yes. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It's just more peaceful. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because, see, when you're trying to judge others, there's just a torment that comes. Mm-hmm. Because you know, the Spirit is telling you, you're not doing it yourself. Mm-hmm. You're not doing it yourself. And see, we ignore that. Oh, this, this is a different situation. It's not different. It's not different. You want to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and allow Him to show you, okay, Lord, what am I doing? Why am I being so judgmental and critical? What is it that I'm not doing that you've asked me to do? Amen? Amen.